faith. James made one unique statement here and he says when you fall into temptation. He's not like some people think that is impossible. Any human being live on earth can fall into temptation. Temptation is not a sin. The sin is when you commit it. Amen. It's good to see each one of you here this morning after Thanksgiving. Everybody look like they're bubbling over. And if you didn't make it Thanksgiving, you made it on Black Friday. All right. <laughs> At least we're here. When upon life's billows your tempt is tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Friends, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. 
It is a wonderful thing to know that only God can bless us with blessings that will never grow old. Everything we have gets old. But God's blessings. I'm glad that God has given me an understanding that his blessings supersede what we think we have. I never was a person, and I'm glad of it, that worried about what I didn't have. I was always thankful for what I did have. Because I didn't have to have anything. Growing up, uh, there was nine of us in the household. I'm talking about young people then. We had, each one of us had what it was called, a, it was made by hand. They call it a stocking. And it was full. And there was nobody complaining. Now they got a room full and complaining all the time. The reason of that is because many of our young people have not been taught that God, when he blesses you to be alive, you got much to be thankful for. Uh, a young man, 15 years old, bumped into it. This is public news. Bumped into a young Afro-American, 15 years old, bumped into an elder, just bumped into an elderly Caucasian man, and he shot him. Now, if you live in America, you're going to bump into somebody. You see, when you're that evil, you have forgotten your day will come. Amen. Now you might not want to talk about this because some of, some of you all in here are known as Republicans. And uh, I can talk about it. Uh, when there is evil in people and the wrong person speaks, it stirs it up. Amen. I repeat, it stirs it up. I've been in church all my life, but I wasn't a member of a church for a year, 15 months, only because I was trying to make a choice when I went to Chicago. I told you this before. Three churches or four, I really didn't like all of them, and I couldn't join them all. So it took me some time to make a decision which one I wanted to join. I'll tell you, friends, one of the main problems in America is not the Republicans or the Democrats. One of the main problems in America is the church. The church let its gods down from teaching people to teach their children their responsibility. Amen. Amen. I, 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 I say it all the time. I had seven of my great grandkids at my house Thanksgiving. And uh, one of them dropped something and looked back. I said, what you looking back for? She said, I don't know, Papa. I said, well, if you don't pick up what you drop, you remember. <laughs> and Mama was there. See, you... I'm not picking up behind you. You're eight years old. I'm not cleaning up behind you. I didn't get it, and so I'm not going to let anybody else do it. But now we live in a world that people, little boys, my little cute son, my little handsome grandson, and my cute daughter, and when they get 18 years old, they can't even cook grits. It's your fault, not theirs. Children have to be taught to be responsible for themselves. Amen. Eight years old, my brothers and sisters, we had to be responsible for getting our own shower and our own dress code because Mama Hilda was not going to do it. 
And so if we don't change, we're going to lose more than we have already lost. We have no choice. You ought to take the time and count your blessings. See what God has done for you. Now being blessed does not mean you ought to be proudful and arrogant and jealous of somebody else. Amen. Amen. I say it again, amen. amen. Every time you look at that stuff in your house, you ought to thank God for that stuff. We, we had three funerals last month and four this month, and nobody carried anything away with them. You're going to leave that stuff. Enjoy your life. Let me, brethren, and this is to the brethren. Uh, Brother Holloway, he didn't, this, this brother didn't go, didn't like to go nowhere. He wanted to keep it in his pocket. He died, Brother Holloway, in August. And uh, I saw his wife two weeks ago. I don't know, I just knew him. I saw Brother Holloway, she's driving now a, a brand new Mercedes. <laughs> and she went, drove to Louisiana to her family's Thanksgiving gathering. He didn't want to spend nothing, but now this is to the women. Women, you go to Black Friday, is that right? I didn't hear much. So brethren, if you don't want to enjoy some of it with them when you're living, as soon as ashes to ashes, dust to dust, you have hurt your fuss, they're going to enjoy life. Is that right, ladies? So enjoy yourself with each other. Amen. I, uh, I might leave something, but it certainly won't be anything I didn't enjoy. Amen. Let's move on. I repeat, I told you that friends, the danger of Unstable faith. Now I want to use some language theologically this morning. Uh, you may have never heard this in your Bible. So I want you to get it. It's amazing how many people in church does not understand what faith means. They don't understand faith. So many times they'll come to church for a year, two years, or three and they said, and they drop out because they said, well, I've been going to church. I haven't felt God. I haven't seen him. Let me, let me tell you something. You haven't seen God's hands. And you haven't shook hands with God. Amen. And you cannot feel God with your hands. But God can reveal to you whatever he wants to. Now listen to me carefully this morning. You see, your faith, Charles, is connected with your emotions. And your emotions is connected with your mind. Listen carefully now. Let me give you just a simple illustration. Uh, Stand up, Charles, Brother Williams. When Brother Williams gets nervous, real nervous, I call him down here this morning interviewing him, he gets nervous. It doesn't affect his nerve. It affects his stomach. Amen. You missed it. Amen. He gets nervous, he catches his stomach. So, Lord, help me. They are connected together. Your faith is waiting for you to make a move. Amen. Amen. Let me, let, let, thank you. Let me, some of you remember. It, 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 this building where we are now, I used to come over here and put something under my knees because there was glass and everything, and I'd pray. People could say, told my wife and some of the people in the church and some of the deacons, said, Pastor Williams has lost his mind. 
Sister William, you need to go over there and try to talk to him. I went every day for an hour. Now listen carefully because you, you missed something. I was praying for the vision God had given me. The vision was that now you're going to overflow this church. You had to build a new one. So then I came over here to bow every day. I could have prayed at home and I did. I could have prayed in church and I did. I came over here to pray that the vision through my faith will come to be seen. You're not getting it. Let me, let me go back. Now, not last year, but now, what is faith? In the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the first verse. Now faith is what? Now listen to what it says now. That's how come we miss it. Now faith is. Not yesterday when you was in Arkansas. But now faith is. Is what? The substance of what? Now I'm over here praying with my faith. And the substance I didn't see. I only saw the vision, and the vision was a person that was about some of you. Oh, the vision was, and now the main auditorium would be here. The fellowship hall would be here. The women's room to get married and dressed would be away from my office because they would drive me down to Mississippi. All of the needles and the thread would be in their room, would be over here. The wedding chapter would be here. I remember, person, I'm praying and naming it, but I don't have it. Come on, Come on. Now listen to your faith. I'm talking about your faith. I won't get through with this sermon today. So then I don't have, I don't have no building. But my faith is now. Now I pray because it, it, it's the substance of all things and it's the evidence of what? I didn't, I couldn't put my hand on this building, but I saw it by faith. Come on, Come on. So because of my faith, I remember Brother Shirley Kennedy said to me, Brother William, you, you, you need to be careful here. Why would I be careful yes. when I have faith in God? Yes, sir. I can't see God, but the evidence is what he's, when the, give me this. I can't see God, but here's the evidence. And church, many of you have, especially people that have actually believed that academics is better than Jesus. Nothing wrong with academics, but God gave us five senses. But you don't use your senses to describe God. Help me here, Holy Ghost. Can I go a little deeper, John? Listen careful here. You have five senses because part of your senses is for you to see this universe God has made and how beautiful it is. The other senses you use is to protect you so you don't get hurt or kill yourself. But you can't line that up with your faith in God. You don't take your senses in. Well, I, I, I believe what my senses say. Well, keep on believing it. Keep on. And then when we come, came to the conclusion that we were really going to build a church and we met, some people say it will never happen. You see, then you have to use your senses. God is not in never. The only never God is in, he'll never change. So, so I, go, I, I go by this as my evidence. I, I look at this. Well, mm, he gave me the vision, so where's the evidence? If you read down in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, you'll find it. Amen. 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 I came to this state from Chicago, and my brother's crying, and my relatives crying. Said there's no job in California. A lot of folks are not working. That's fine. But that wasn't me. I'm believing God. He said, if you go, I got this for you and this for you and this for you. 
So I boarded TWA and flew to Los Angeles. I haven't stopped working since I've been here. You missed it. Your faith cannot be unstable. Many of you in here this morning, you have done well, but you still have baby faith. Paul said, I can't feed you what? I, I can't give you meat. I got to give you milk because you're still a baby in Christ. You can't take much. Amen. Now this is amazing to me. I have been offered the last three weeks. Some people thought I had retired. Three positions of worker. Don't you know if I retire, I'm not going to take either one of them? But the, the, the issue is, the evidence of my past has caught up with these people for their future. You missed it. Nobody wants a lazy person. Uh, if, I, if, if I start dating and I discover the sister is lazy, I'm going to drop her. She can't be lazy with me. Come on, sir. I said she can't be lazy. And one of the lazy straws that they have that I don't cook no more. Well, how am I going to eat? Come on now. I leave it alone. And so, so work, work your faith. Let, 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 let me give you another example. Uh, and, and this you know about. And that's why I'm giving them to you. And many of you in here, the old the, the church on, on 11th Avenue, the old building, when we sit down with, I sat down with the deacons and said, this is what we need to do to this building. We need to do it now. One of the men was, I mean, I appreciate you, Pastor. We tried that. It won't work. That encouraged me. It didn't work under your guidance. But now it would work under our faith. All we got to do is to see what we need and then go and tell God this is what we need and you've always provided for us. Now we need you to disperse it so we can use it. You're not getting it. Your faith must be put to work, but you've got to have some evidence that would, why you have it working. You all are quiet. Let me give you another one then. I said we'll pay for this church within six to eight years. Ten is the most. That'll never happen. We did it in six years and seven months. Why did it happen? We worked our faith. Your faith is waiting on you. Quit praying to God. Lord, give me more love. I can love more. No, you got the love. You need to pray to God to give you the will to put it out. I, I, I grew up with some cheap people. Uh, cheap, cheap. They was cheap, cheap cheap. They were so cheap until they would hide to eat. Cheap. And I finally was nicely and got away from them. Cheap people are dangerous. Because they just like this. You can't get nothing in here, is that right? And nothing is coming out. If you want to get something in here, open your hand and share with somebody else. Amen. So don't, 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 uh, don't let your faith be unstable. Amen. Let it be stable, because it's dangerous to have an unstable faith. James, listen to what he says. James 
says in one, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes scattered abroad, uh, my friends, to the nation's greetings. This James, that's the number of them, but this James here was, was the brother of Jesus. It is said that he prayed so much that he had trouble with his knees. Now, it's one thing to pray. It's another thing to say your prayers. How many of y'all know what it means by saying your prayers? Now, let me give you an, an, an illustration here. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing me not to get hurt. Brought me home safe. I just thank you. Dive in the bed and say, good night, God. That's not praying. You pray for what you're supposed to be after. And then you go to bed and meditate on it. Meditate. What is it that you want? I wanted to go to the Virgin Islands. And uh, when I counted the cost, I couldn't afford it. I said, now, Lord, you know I can't afford but you know I want to go. And I'm looking forward. I'm making plans to go. I said to my wife, honey, make some plans. We're going next year. We, she said, we're going? I said, oh, yes, ma'am, we're going. I was making the plans because in my heart I wanted to go, and God already had it made. I called the airline, uh, people that sells tickets, I said, when you have a good deal going to the Virgin Islands, let me know. I knew the lady. Give me a, get, let me know your good deal. She calls me back two weeks and said, we have a good deal coming up. If two gold want to get a half price for her ticket or his ticket, you telling me I was that smart? No. I wanted to go. I'm praying. I was going down there to look about something with mission work. It just went so smooth. So smooth. Then when I got to the place to buy the ticket and a half, pay for a ticket and a half, gentleman sitting over there, he said, oh, Dr. Williams, where are you headed? I said, I'm trying to get to the Virgin Island. I said, the, the money looks kind of short, but I'm going to make it. He said, well, what? What is it that you need? I said, I only need three more thousand. <laughs> and brother, brother Coleman, I'm going to tell you this, Brother Coleman. I know you and I like you. Brother Coleman, he said, is that all? I said, you know, we got to eat. And then, you know, <laughs> if you want to add a little more, I can show you I still had the stuff. He wrote me a check for 3500 He said, you've been nice to me. You missed it. You can say what you want to say, but I was in the Virgin Islands for three weeks, for 21 days. <laughs> Went all of the island. Hey, man. And then over a dime when I got back. You got to work your faith. It's not going to work for you. Amen. Let's move on. James, my friends, among the nation's greetings. He says, consider pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith proceeds, my friends, persistence. Faith doesn't sit around, it waits on us. Let me give you a, 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 a homely example. Tomorrow morning, some of you, you're going to wake up and you're going to turn over. And you got a lot to do. When you wake up, you're waking up to get up. Do what you have to do and then lay back down in the evening. Right. 
Brother William, I'm, I've heard that before. And you must have when you're not doing it. All right. <laughs> you do what you don't know. Somebody say, I do what I know. I do a whole lot of things I don't know. Amen. Amen. I don't know it. I had, to, I had to go someplace yesterday, and, and, and I got some people' attention to take me. I didn't know whether it was busy or not. That wasn't my business. All I know is there was blessing, a blessing. Your faith must work for you. This is to you people who are scared and reluctant. We're going to build a senior housing. Some of you say, I'm not giving a dime. You're going to miss your blessing, not us. We're going to give a dollar more than a dime. That building will go up. My faith has never failed me yet. And it's not going to fail me now. Amen. Amen. Let me give you another one. I, I wanted my late wife's place where she's buried. I wanted the flowers checked. So I had to drive down there. So I went and talked to the people. I said, what, what deal can you give me? I love the work on deal. Well, he said, because what you have done, we will handle it without cost. Come on now. So when I go down there, the flowers look nice. If I'd have kept my mouth closed, the devil would have got in it. Yeah. The devil is right on your trail because he doesn't like Christians. But God loves us. And in spite of us, God still loves us. Yes, and that's why I love him. Because no one can get between myself and God. Amen. Amen. The God I'm talking about this morning, he is beyond the beyond. He's super beyond super. He made what has never been and operating what you said never will be. Yes. This God is something else and somebody. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Well now, Brother William, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I've, I've been in church for a year and I don't know this God. It is your fault. Yes. If you want a God to reveal himself to you, read this. And if you want him to answer you, pray to him. And then go to sleep and rest on it. And watch your faith work it. Amen. Amen. I went to South America and uh, got down there. They said in our hotel, you don't have no reservation. I said, no problem. We'll call back here to the people that make reservation for our flight. Told them what happened. They said, don't worry, don't worry. Give us an hour. We went down the street and got a better hotel. You missed it. Be nice to people. Love people. You see, parents are they're mean and they're evil. You used to be the same way. God has lifted it now. You got to share with others. There's nobody like Jesus. Church, Jesus, uh, uh, James says, consider its pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whatever your, you face trials of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces strength, guidance, and also power. Let's perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Hallelujah. The man said, Brother Williams, have you got your arrangements when you die? He said, they got a sale on cremation. 
I said, no, I paid for mine already. I'm not going to be burned. If I'm not going to be burned in hell, I'm not going to be burned on earth. I am not going to be cremated. You said, but there's nothing wrong with it. That's you. I went to the cremation space. And I saw that heat and that fire and to push me in that and I've been saved, sanctified and full of the Holy Spirit. I don't need that. Put me in a crib or in the ground and let me easy. Make me look like I'm coming back even if you don't see me. What I need was some ashes on my chimney. I'd rather on my fireplace. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who giveth generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. James 1, 6 through 8. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a waver of the sea. Blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such as person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. When I pray, I don't expect, I expect something. When I pay my tithe, I expect something. Well, you don't pay your tithe, you expect something, and then you don't know God. Listen to what he says. He says, if you, when you pay your tithes, he, he says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out your work that you can't do work. That's God. The windows of heaven. You say, but I am seeing the windows of heaven. Then he'll reveal it to you if you get in this. No tithe the payer ever suffers if they give it in faith. I don't think nobody should give money in church and they don't believe in, if they got a bad spirit, they should never give it. Don't mix your bad money with my good money. Because God is going to take care of his church. Amen, A.V. So let your faith not be, my friends, unstable. Listen, listen if you please. Listen if you please. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all, how many? In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Amen. Have you ever stopped sometimes to think about where you came from? How crooked you used to be. And God straightened you out. Amen. You say, well, I know he straightened me out. Amen. In all segments of life, friend, the key word is faith. Faith. Everything we receive comes by faith in God. We need to always have God's presence. Many people are saved, but they are practicing baby faith. Baby faith, not real faith. Mark 11, 20 through 23. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have you have faith in God? Jesus answered, friends, listen carefully. Truly I tell you, if anyone said to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in that, my friends, their hearts, must believe, must believe, church, what they say will happen. 
it will be done by them. Many of us sit around waiting for God to help us when he already has helped us and we won't follow through with it. Amen. What they say will happen, it will be done for them. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. We have access to God by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Listen carefully. We are forgiven by faith. We resist the devil by faith. We, my friends, we crawl by faith. Not by what we think or what we see. It's all about faith. Listen again. We claim our blessing from God by faith. We, we fall in love by faith. You don't know the person you fall in love with. And now you're getting them off a line. You don't know where you're coming from. Why would I get somebody off line when you got thousands of women walking around in Sacramento? We, my friends, we trust by faith. We build friendship by faith. We invite our, my, my, my friend, listen, we invest our money by faith. You don't know what they're going to do with your money. You trust them by faith. When we have unstable faith, we have lack of trust. Church, we must guard ourselves against human reasoning and human feeling. If you feel it, do it. That's why so many people are messed up. You don't do everything you feel. Church, we must never fail to see God in our circumstances. We must spend all the time we can finding to avoid negative counseling. This negative stuff, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, don't run with negative people. They are dangerous. Amen, Ruth. Negativeness will discourage your faith. Amen. When we fail to walk by faith, then our faith becomes unstable, friends, and unstable faith brings consequences. We blame ourselves. We miss the blessings of God, my friend. We stagnate our faith. We mislead others. We lose our influence. We make wrong decisions. We lose our peace when we mess with our faith. Amen. Christmas is upon us. Church, we make costly decisions. We discourage our faith. And only God by faith can keep us on track. Amen. I teach this church Many of you laugh at it, and you say that I'm old-fashioned, and that's fine. I don't have no problem with that. At least I have somewhere to stay. <laughs> old-fashioned. At least I have a car to drive. At least I don't live in Green Haven and pay $2,000 a month. Old-fashioned folks don't do that. Let me see, can I call up somebody? My grandmother died at 80 and 97. She owned a home surrounded by a lot, old fashioned. My mother and father, at their age, with nine children, two died, seven lived, bought a house and built it when my daddy was ill, old fashioned. Old fashioned folks, they had a car and a truck. Old-fashioned. 
old-fashioned folks sent you scooters to school. And when you finished, you didn't have enough to think of. Old-fashioned. Old-fashioned always had a few dollars in their pocket. Now let me, let, 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 I'm just calling the road. Old-fashioned said, don't marry her. Because she will not make you a good wife and you married her anyway. And in two years, you had to quit her. Old-fashioned said, don't marry that man. He's lazy. You married him anyway and you didn't have him much more than three weeks. That's old-fashioned. Old-fashioned said, mind your own business. And you stay out of trouble. That's old-fashioned. Old-fashioned said, look nice, dress nice, and you'll be nice and find somebody nice. That's old-fashioned. Old-fashioned said, you don't have a bathtub, but you can get in a tin tub and take a bath so when you go out, nobody smells you. That's old-fashioned. Old-fashioned said, if you don't have no hair, brush back what you have. That's old-fashioned. Old-fashioned said, if you don't have much money, buy something what you have and leave the rest alone. Yeah. Old-fashioned said, don't owe everybody in town because you can't pay them. Yeah. That's old-fashioned. Yeah. Old-fashioned said, be kind and happy and bless others and God will bless you. Yeah. That's old-fashioned. Yeah. Let me tell you, old-fashioned said, I always want a nice church and God will help you to pay for it. And we are living witness, this is old-fashioned. Yeah. Old-fashioned. So when somebody said to me, Pastor, when you're old-fashioned, I smile. Because I'm thankful yeah. that I'm old-fashioned. Let, 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 let me go back and I'll be through. Listen careful here. When I think about what folks say when you're old-fashioned, I laugh. Because I have evidence that it pays off. My faith looks up to thee. Thou Lamb of Calvary, thou, my friends, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray. Take all of my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. Friends, I'm glad to be in the rank of the old-fashioned. When I think about the old-fashioned, I take my seat. When I think about the old-fashioned, when I think about it, the old-fashioned, I think about at least I made it here. The modern generation who knows everything, some of them didn't make it. Listen careful now. The reason I love to live in the old fashion, because when I am in need, I don't have to beg. I just tell him what I want. He'll come to my rescue every time. In the old fashioned, I might not have all you have, but I have what I need in the old fashioned. I maybe didn't have turkey for Thanksgiving, but at least I had, my friends, party wings. Old fashioned. I'm telling you, old fashioned would get you somewhere. Old fashioned. When Christmas is over this year, I have 11, nine great grandkids, two grandkids, and a daughter, and some relatives that I have to help. But when it's all over, I won't owe nobody. Because old fashioned, I put it on the layaway in August. And when I pay the last bill, it'll be in December on the layaway. The layaway is old fashioned. You, 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 you don't get it. But it's best to be in the old fashioned and be happy than be in the modern world and be sad. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the glory of his king. I'm going to tell you today, whether you like it or not, the reason I praise God. Look at the shoes I have on. I owe him something. Look at the pants I have on. I owe him something. Look at the jacket I have on. I owe him something. I got to praise him because he's been too good. Look at I'm standing here this morning and I got to praise him. He's worthy to be praised. I don't care what you think, I'm going to praise him until I die. He woke me up early this morning. I got to praise him. He keeps me every day when I can't keep myself. I got to praise him. I tell you, he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, if you want to know this God, that will help you. We sing a lot of times, my friends, and we don't think about what we're singing. If you thought about what you were singing, you wouldn't sing it, really. You said, God will make a way. And then you're crying all day. That's not what you believe. He is Lord. He is well, and he, yes, every, every, confess, he, Lord, he is. If you're here, would like to join this church. Will you come? Will you come if you'd like to be a member of St. Paul? Will you come today? This is the last fourth Sunday in this year of November. I want to have one left. Will you come today? Will you come? Will you come today? And every time that Jesus, will you come today? Will you come? Will you come today? He's Lord. Will you come today? Oh, yes, He is. Will you come? We'll be glad to have you part of us. Hallelujah. Shall and every will you come today? Will you come today? Glad he's Lord. He is. Will you come today?